Welcome mobile devs. Welcome to Xamarin Form uh, tutorials. In this tutorial we will talk about uh, carousel page. Let's take a look back what makes a Xamarin Form page. Uh, you have seen in uh, the previous videos also. So first of all you always have a page which maintains uh, all of the visible area on uh, the screen and then it contains any kind of a layout and inside the layout you form different kind of views like label, date picker or any kind of uh, table cell. The various kind of form pages, the way you can you know structure your data, uh, we have seen it before also. We have the content page, master detail page, navigation page, tabbed page etc. Okay so now we will talk about carousel page. What is a carousel page? It's a type of a page which uh, can hold multiple pages and give the functionality to you know the user to swipe left or right to you know move between the pages it is very much similar to the tabbed page which you have seen in the previous videos also but in the tabbed page you have a list of tabs below the page so that people can you know move between one page to another page but in this one people can actually uh, swipe left or right to move between the pages uh, it contains a list of pages it has to be only content pages. You cannot use master detail page or anything else inside the carousel pages. It has to be a list of content pages. That's what being displayed on the display area. Uh, technically, it inherits from the multi-page uh, class uh, and the T here is the content page. So how does carousel page, you know, looks like? It's a very simple, if you see at, uh, you know, the screens, iOS, Android and Windows Phone, it always show you only one page at a time. So you, you can't feel anything different from, you know, anything else. You only see only one thing at a time. There is nothing in uh, the footer unless you have added that and there is nothing in the header also. So let's talk about the architecture of the carousel page. You always have a visible area which displays you, you know, the content of the content page on the screen. But under the hood, you actually have a list of content pages. It is exactly the same in you know all of the platforms. Those content pages are not visible on the UI unless you know you have swiped to bring that page on the screen. So the default behavior of the carousel pages, you know, you have a list of pages uh, behind the scenes which is not visible, but you only see one page at a time on your screen. And if you try to you know swipe from right to left what will happen the previous page will go away and the new content of another page will come on on the visible area and if you do you know from if you swipe from left to right same thing will happen in the reverse way the content of the page which is on the left hand side which come on to the screen so this is an example of the carousel page you see one page, uh, I made it a very simple page for uh, the demo. You see this is the content of uh, this page. If you swipe from right to left, you see another page is coming on the screen. If you again swipe, if there is any other page in the list, that page will come on the screen. And I can do swiping from left to right. If there is nothing on the left side, if there is nothing on the left side, nothing will come up. So basically you have a list of pages and you can very easily swipe between these pages. So how can we load the list of pages inside uh, the carousel page? There are two ways to do that. We will discuss only one way right now and uh, the second way we will do uh, after a couple of days when we do discuss the data binding. Uh, we can simply provide a list of pages as a child pages to the carousel page. Uh, I think let's do a quick demo to see how that all works on uh, Mac but you can do this exactly same thing on Microsoft Visual Studio on Windows platform also uh, I'm creating a new solution uh, in uh, the solution we can say that uh, I am doing learning carousel page uh, we already did discuss these things uh, in the previous videos also. I'm selecting, uh, let me use the GitHub also so that I can upload all of the code to my GitHub page. And uh, you guys can see that and provide for any of, uh, you know, 
your feedback. So by default, we always have these three pages. Okay, so we have this page right now uh, as the default page of the application. Uh, if we run this application as it is, uh, it will give us a only one page view to say that yes, I'm Xamarin form. Now this is coming because it was previously loaded into you know my simulator. So you see that it says that I'm a Xamarin form. So now let's convert this uh, application into a carousel page application. So first of all, let's try. Uh, let's delete this page. You can keep the same page also, but for the sake of simplicity, I will create a new page. Add a new file. I will add, uh, add a page. I will say that main carousel page. So first of all, you need to change by default when you add a page, it is always of a content type until something new uh, comes up. So you have to change its type. We say that it's a uh, carousel page. You also need to go to the type and change here that this is a carousel page. Uh, one another thing which you need to do that in uh, the app.xaml, you need to change the default page because now we have changed uh, the default page to the main carousel page. We need to make that change here. So now this is the container. If you have uh, you know seen the previous slide, this is the container inside this container we need to define a list of pages uh, let's start with the easy way so first of all i can say that yes this is my content page inside the content page i have uh, content page dot content i can say this so i have the content page inside the content page what is the second option we have to have that is called a layout so we will use a stack layout and inside the layout what we need to have the the view the view we will use here i will say i'm a label i will say text and say that uh, i am page one okay so you use control i to format everything uh, let's do a couple of more formatting uh, stack layout i will say horizontal option i am uh, i want to be in the center vertical option i want to be in the center i will change the background color of the content page just to you know make sure that when we transition from one page to another page we can easily see the transition so this is the one page we added one page here now let's copy and paste two times copy and change two times now let's say that this is page number two and this is page number three let me change its color to green this color to blue i'm sorry i'm very bad in colors I have a very bad taste of the colors, but I'm just doing it for, you know, to sake to explain that how they all work. So what we have done so far, we created a main carousel page. This is the page and inside that we provided a list of pages. This is page number one. This is page number two and this is page number three. Now let's try to run that. So now once we run the solution, what should we expect? Uh, we should see only one page at a time and that will be the page number one yep we see page number one and now if we swipe if i swipe from right to left i see i'm page number two if i swipe again from right to left i see yes i'm page number three and you can swipe backward also and if i try to swipe now it won't go back because there is nothing else so this is the easiest way you know to add pages to to the list another very important thing which we also spoke that this list has to be content page you cannot have any other type of pages like navigation pages or the master detail pages inside the carousel page however you can have carousel page inside the master detail or inside the navigation page no one will you know stop you to do that so now we want to add more pages to the carousel page, uh, but we want to make this page very neat and clean because this is so hard to debug. And if we want to include, uh, increase the complexity of uh, each page, we can't do like this one. We have to define these pages separately. Uh, so what we do, uh, we add another page. I will say that I'm uh, page one.
so I added a page I got that error because I previously had a couple of pages there and I will say that I will say that you know <clears throat> I will define a stack layout I will say horizontal options center vertical options center right and I will say here that I am a label and text is I am an external page okay so everything seems fine and let me add another page I will say I am page two two and I will I can basically say all of these things in fact that this is I will say I am another external page and just like we did before let's try to change uh, the background color this way we can easily ident you can easily identify between you know those pages so now we de define two external pages now how can we plug in those external pages here for example we will just keep these pages also we want to embed those pages here there is a very important property to access everything inside your namespace most of the time you can see that it is already here uh, let's see we do not have that it's called local namespace so how do you have access to the local namespace you write XML NS NS stands for uh, the namespace then you say local CLR namespace and then you define the name of your assembly and our assembly is learning carousel page and now I can simply write local what is wrong why it is not taking XML and as local oh sorry these spellings are wrong namespace yep now it will take local page 1 and page 2 simply you can say this and if you want to define another page you can say this and the beauty of this thing also you can define the same thing multiple times so basically you are feeding the same page to the list multiple times let's try to run that so what should we see now we should see a huge list of pages uh, six external pages we defined two and then you know copied them three times and three pages which we did define inside the carousel page see it says I'm external page and this says I'm another external page which is this page 2 2 after that again this comes this one page 1 page 2 2 page 1 page 2 2 and after that we have this page with the background yellow and that is coming here so it is pretty simple uh, you can do all kind of experiments with the, uh, the carousel page now you have these external pages you can define all of the complexity you know inside those pages so quick summary uh, we did learn how to create a carousel page and how can we you know do uh, how can we define the settings of the child page to the carousel page if you have any question please write down me in uh, the comments and subscribe to the channel for more videos I will be creating more videos very soon thank you so much and enjoy the coding